from speculation that Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, is having twins, to bets that Harry and Meghan would raise the first gender-neutral royal baby, nothing has been off-limits over the course of the Duchess's pregnancy. With Meghan due to go into labor any day now, here's what we know about the birthing process, media circus, potential names and titles already, and what we'll have to wait to find out. The hours ahead of a royal birth run like clockwork. Traditionally, journalists and photographers from across the UK, and the globe, rush for the best spot near the hospital, or palace, where the baby will be born, in anticipation of getting the sought-after shot of the new royal mum and her baby, or should that be babies? Who knows? However, recent reports have thrown a spanner in the works. A source close to Royals in the Sun has said Meghan will opt for a birth as private as possible given the potential for complications, and so the Duchess can recover in private. This means we may have to wait a little longer than usual to see baby Sussex for the first time. Meghan and Harry have launched their own official Instagram account days ahead of the Duchess's due date, suggesting the couple may choose to share a picture of baby Sussex on social media instead of going down the traditional photo call route. In the past, there's been widespread criticism leveled at the royals over Kate's appearances on the steps of the Lindo Wing at St Mary's Hospital in Paddington, central London, after giving birth. When the Duchess of Cambridge held Prince George up to photographers in 2013, Princess Charlotte in 2015 and Prince Louis in 2018, with a full face of makeup shortly after giving birth. She received an outpouring of support from new mums concerned she had been forced to make herself presentable too quickly. Others chided the royals for the appearances, saying they placed unfair expectations on new mums by offering up an unrealistic image of the first 24 hours of motherhood. If Meghan does end up making a similar appearance at the Lindo Wing, or wherever she ends up giving birth, the royals are likely to face the same criticism again. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Before any of this happens, inside the birthing room, the royals are expected to follow a number of rules ahead of, during, and after the birth, some of which have courted controversy. For starters, Charlie Proctor, editor-in-chief of Royal Central, says there is a centuries-old tradition that dictates the Queen is to be the first to know about the birth. Once the Queen has been officially notified, a bulletin will be posted on the forecourt of Buckingham Palace for the public. Mr. Proctor says. To ensure the news comes out per tradition, the midwives and any hospital staff involved in the birth are not permitted to talk in public about any detail to do with the birth. An Australian radio show famously hoax called the hospital where the Duchess of Cambridge was being treated in 2012 to try and gather information about her pregnancy. This stunt led to the death of a nurse, Mr. Proctor says. With the Queen notified of the birth and the bulletin posted at Buckingham Palace, gun salutes have traditionally been fired from London's Hyde Park and the Tower of London to mark the royal baby's arrival. How likely are Meghan and Harry to name their baby Diana? The bookies sure seem to think it's a possibility. At the time of writing, odds were at 12 to 1, but according to Mr. Proctor we shouldn't place too much weight on these reports. Mr. Proctor explains. I highly doubt the baby will be called Diana. Every single time there is a royal baby in the UK, Diana comes out as the bookie's favourite. Diana might well be a middle name, as it is for Princess Charlotte, but I don't expect to see it as the baby's first name. Charles was the most popular boy's name, at 13 to 1 at the time of writing. Make of that what you will. When Meghan's pregnancy was announced ahead of the 2018 royal tour in October, Betting company Ledbrokes shared the odds of 11 potential names, highlighting Victoria and Albert as the frontrunners. Philip, Albert, Elizabeth, James, Mary and William were also on the list. Meanwhile, if you had a burning desire to find out the sex of Meghan and Harry's baby, you're out of luck. As is reportedly tradition with royal pregnancies, the couple have said they themselves don't know the sex of their baby which means the time some people spent decoding clues from Meghan's New York baby shower was time wasted. Will baby Sussex be a prince or princess? According to Mr. Proctor, we're likely to find out what the baby's title is a few days after the birth, when the name is announced. 
The question of whether the baby will be dubbed a prince or a princess like William and Kate's kids has been a hot one, but Mr. Proctor says, unless the Queen grants a special letters patent, it is highly unlikely that the baby will be a prince or princess. He adds, if the baby is a boy, he will almost certainly be styled as the Earl of Dumbarton, which is one of Prince Harry's lesser titles. If baby Sussex is a girl, she will be styled as Lady as her first name with Mountbatten Windsor as a surname, just like Prince Edward's daughter, Lady Louise. While we'll have to wait a while to find all of this out, at least one thing is for sure, so long as William and Kate don't have any more kids, baby Sussex will be seventh in line to the British throne. The rumors surrounding the birth of baby Sussex have been incessant. In the months leading up to Meghan's due date, we've heard it all, from reports that the Duchess would be using a doula a non-medical support person, to claim she would pursue a natural birth. Mr. Proctor says he can't confirm any rumors surrounding the birth either way, but adds he wouldn't be entirely surprised if Meghan, did, use a doula. He says, although no member of the royal family has ever used one in the past, Meghan might well break with tradition. That being said, there has been no indication from Kensington Palace that a doula is being used, nor will there be. Anything is possible, but the only people who know this are the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, he says. That said, if the whisper about Meghan being pregnant with twins is true, it'd be a big deal. While reports Meghan was pregnant with twins started swirling pretty much as soon as the pregnancy was revealed, speculation was stirred further on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's February trip to Morocco. Cameras caught the moment a chef at the Villa des Ambassadors Hotel in Rabat extended an invitation to Meghan to cook for her and Harry the next time they visited Morocco. While looking down at her bump, Meghan said, Yes. The whole family next time. People took the Duchess's use of the whole family as an indication that she was having more than one baby. This interaction came after Irish betting company Paddy Power announced in November they would no longer be taking bets on the odds of Meghan giving birth to twins due to a sudden and unusual surge in activity that they claimed could have indicated insider knowledge. If the rumors happen to be true and Meghan and Harry are about to welcome twins, it would be a big deal for the royals. Twins haven't occurred in the British royal family for a long time, since 1430, to be precise. The last British royal to give birth to twins was Scottish monarch Joan Beaufort, who had twin boys James and Alexander in the 15th century. But, Mr. Proctor says Meghan will not be having twins, if she were, an announcement would likely have been made by this point.